Welcome to the Glow Getters Podcast. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt, and I'm your host. I teach and inspire leaders to step into their productive selves and find their true potential. I'm a passionate creative and scientist with over eight years of healthcare leadership experience. At age 25, I stepped into my first management role and didn't find the leadership advice I was looking for. So here I'm giving you the tools to end burnout and enjoy a vibrant career and life. Glad you're here to learn and grow with me. Now, on with the show. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to episode 90 of the Glow Getters podcast. I cannot believe it. <laughs> 90 episodes. We're going to be hitting 100 episodes on October 20th. So I don't know what I'm going to do for that yet. Probably a giveaway, but I definitely want to celebrate with you all. So make sure you're following me um, at Glow Getters Podcast on Instagram and at Kayla Fahey Arndt on Instagram so that you can watch for my posts and my stories and like vote on what you want to do to celebrate. But this is huge. I started the podcast back in 2018 um, after I had my daughter and I was on maternity leave. And so if you listen to like episode three, you'll understand why there is like a episode. It's not episode one, but um, it's taken me a while to like find my groove and figure out what I really love sharing about and how to be more consistent, and it's just been super fun, um, sort of exploding in 2020 and and uh, 2021. And so, um, I'm really glad that you're here. So I just want to say thank you for listening. And um, yeah, 100 episodes on October 20th. Wow, so so cool. So um, you guys voted on my Instagram stories about which topic you wanted to hear about, and you chose. Um, how to host better one-on-ones. So love this topic. I've talked about it before on my YouTube channel. I have a whole video on um, one-on-ones that you can check out. It's like one of my first videos from August or July or June of 2020. So you can like scroll back all the way to the beginning of my channel. I think I have over 70 videos on there now um, and check that out. Because today, I, I am going to go over the structure of one-on-ones that I really enjoy, but I'm also going to tell you how to make them better, right? Like, how to enhance them and how to have better relationships and um, and really, really how to train your team members to come to you to your one-on-ones with the information that you need. And also, you can take these tips to your leader for when you're meeting with them and it's kind of sort of your one-on-one meeting time with them, too. Before we dive on in, I do want to remind you that, you guys, I'm getting super, super excited because um, October 4th is when my The Leader Toolkit course launches, um, and I've been talking about this for a few weeks now. It's a week away. Like, today is, I don't know, the 27th of September when this drops, and the week after is October 4th, so we're already a week away. So if you're, like, on the fence... Go to my website at glowgetterslife.com, and in the menu, I have the waitlist open for that for the course. Just put your email in there, and I will send you all of the deets to the course so that you can just decide, like, final, final. You're not signing your life away when you join the waitlist <laughs> if you want to join the course. Um, and I'll send you an email with every detail. Um, I told you up front, it's a $50 one-time investment. I make it $49.99. So <laughs> it includes four modules, your custom learning plan, intentional time, know yourself and know your people, get results. And you also get any course add-ons I ever create. You get access to my leadership collaborative community, which is so much fun. And I've been showing uh, reels on my Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt. If you haven't um, seen those, just showing like what the inside of the site that I use is look, looks like for the course. I use Mighty Networks, so it's both a community and a course website, which is so cool, and it links out to my YouTube. It links out to my website. Um, you guys can comment. There's, like, a wall. Like, Facebook, it's, the posts look like Instagram. It's just super nice, and you can set it up so you get notifications or you don't. <laughs> you can get a daily like wrap-up email instead of like a bunch of pings during the day. It's super nice. So I really, really love the platform. 
And um, you also get coaching from me. So I'll be inside the community answering your questions. You might be thinking like, Kayla, aren't you due to go on maternity leave soon? (laughs) Yes. So November 3rd is my due date for um, any of you who've been following along. Um, But here's the thing, like the course is self-paced. You get to tackle it as fastly, fast, fastly, as quickly (laughs) or as slowly as you'd like. Um, I'm there for support and offer coaching and answer questions and go deeper into topics that you want to talk about. So, you know, I'm already working on setting up standard work for when I'm on maternity leave and when I come back for how I answer those questions on my new networks. And that's exciting to me. (laughs) So I will be happy and at home and excited to hear what you have to say about the course and answer your questions. So um, don't worry, I won't be like working crazy, but because I won't be teaching the course, but I will be in the community available to you. Um, Lastly, I just want to, you know, a iterate again, you know, during and after the course and my support and coaching, this is going to help you increase your efficiency and productivity. You're going to feel more confident at work and at home because you're going to feel like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Like, I feel like I'm making the right decisions. You're going to gain trust with your team members and your coworkers. You'll find more time to do your work and become less busy. So here's the thing. You'll increase your efficiency, you'll do your work uh, I guess not necessarily quicker, but with more quality and in a more productive fashion in a more planned, intentional way. So you're going to create more time in your calendar because of that. And you're going to be doing things that are more strategic and less busy work. You won't be like frantically checking the boxes off and being like, what did I do today? <laughs> you're going to feel really fulfilled. And because you'll be able to follow through, here's something I used to do a lot is like over promise and under deliver. But this method and what I've learned has really taught me to actually deliver what I promise. And then of course, under promise over deliver. (laughs) That's where you gain trust with folks. And then you'll you'll elevate your mindset to prevent burnout and cultivate vibrance. This is like the most important thing to me is I don't want anyone burning to the ground before they're like, oh, I need to like take care of myself. Like, no, we know what that feels like. It doesn't feel good, and it's really hard to come back from it, and it leaves you really resentful. We can't, you know, as millennials, we change jobs a lot. Uh, we want change. I love change. I'm obsessed with it. At the same time, though, you got to stick around in a position long enough to grow and to notice, like, what could I do better? And so that's where the vibrance comes in, being your best self in your role. And you'll come up with more innovative and ideas, and you're just going to generate more ideas because your head and your mind space is free. You're not burned out. You can't be a visionary when you are tired and depleted. All right, anyways, that's enough about the course. If you're interested, join the wait list. Go to my website at glowgetterslife.com, and it's in the header, join the wait list, so you, I can send you more info, or you can check the show notes. Okay, I'm getting so excited. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, um, on I think Wednesday, I have the plan. Wednesday, September would be the 29th. On my Instagram, at Kayla Fahey Art, I'm going to be announcing a bonus, like a like a freebie that I'm giving away with the course. Dun, dun, dun. So be sure to follow me there so you're like, ooh, okay. And then if you sign up on October 4th, by October 4th, you'll be getting that bonus. All right. All right, how to host a better one-on-one. <laughs> so um, actually in the free resource library on my website, so if you go to my website at glowgetterslife.com, I've been saying that over and over, or in the show notes, I have a free resource library. You can download free templates and PDFs and all that. So I actually have a free one-on-one meetings work aid and notes template. It comes with a first page of instructions for how to host one-on-ones, and the second page is actually the meeting template. So let me quickly go over the structure with you and then talk about how to make it better. So the structure, I like to give the first part to them, usually about two-thirds to my direct report or my team member who I'm meeting with, because it's their meeting. I don't want to be talking the whole time. If you've ever had a boss that just like 
gobbles up your entire time because they're talking about them. <laughs> you're like, uh, <laughs> and then it's like two and a half hours later and you're like trying to back out of their office. Yeah. <laughs> so that doesn't feel good. So I think of this one-on-one meeting as their meeting with me. It's their time to talk to me about barriers they have and give me updates and, uh, let me, you know, shine a little bit. Tell me the good things they're doing. So two thirds time for them, about a third of the time for me, I like to do, it depends on my direct report. Typically lately, they've been more like an hour long just because there's so much going on, but even 30 minutes works really well when you're in a crunch or when you've got a really good working relationship and you can just sort of go down the list of things. Um, 30 minutes works really well when you use a project list, and that is going to be one of my number one tips today for how to host better one-on-ones. So after I go over the structure and the cadence, I'm going to talk more about the project list. So in terms of like cadence, uh, oh, and I should mention, on a quarterly basis, I really like to talk about growth or personal and professional development. I used to really want to talk about like growth opportunities every single meeting. And I think we sort of hint at different ways, you know, it's part of the coaching that I do during the one-on-ones, but like formally looking at goals and development and having just a conversation solely about that. Typically that happens quarterly and I try to schedule that in so that I don't forget to ask about it. All right. Cadence. My golden rule is meet more frequently if you're getting to know your team member or have major deadlines coming up. Less frequently if you can connect regularly outside of one-on-ones or if they just need to give you less frequent updates or you need less frequent updates. The most frequent I would go would be weekly. And then another really good cadence I found is every other week for my more seasoned team members. I do have some members who I just do monthly with because I do engage with them so frequently and their projects are like more long-term. And so monthly works really well. Um, quarterly might be okay if you have a very large number of direct reports. So I work with a lot of nursing leaders and their structure is set up such that they have like hundreds of direct reports and they need to round on all of them basically every day to get through every single one in a quarter. So that's a lot different than being a manager like me who has, um, just a handful of direct reports. I have, let's see, three supervisors, a specialist, a safety officer. Um, So, you know, I have five. It's not that much. Um, I also have indirect uh, accountability to uh, all the other blood bank leaders in the system, which adds, you know, more than a handful. (laughs) So that becomes a lot. But in terms of people who direct report up to me, directly report up to me, it's, it's not like 100. So this is what works for me. For the meeting, I always start by asking, what's on your mind? And this is a really good open-ended question because, you know, I don't really think that we can fully separate work and home life. People are going to be distracted by things going on in their life that are not related to work. And I want to build relationships with people and and I want to know that they have three kids and I want to know that, you know, they just bought a house and stuff. So I enjoy asking this question because I think it helps just sort of, I don't know, break the ice. Like, okay, now we're hopping into a meeting, but really like, Hey, you know, this is what's going on with me. And honestly, it can also be work. They'll be like, Oh, I'm just stressing over this big change. Okay let's talk about it. Like what's stressing you out? And and it leads us into the conversation and we have a really meaning phone call or teams meeting or one-on-one in-person meeting um, where I connect on a deeper level with people because I am listening to what they have to say and what's actually going on in their life. I also really try to follow the rule, listen more, talk less. So even if my direct report's like, oh, do you want to go first? I'll be like, no, like you go first. This is your meeting. And I'll listen and wait till they pause and, you know, engage with me for feedback. And then I'll talk. I try really hard not to interrupt or jump in or interject, even if I already know the answer or I have a solution for them or I have a thought. Because again, I want them to feel like this is their meeting and I'm here to just be fully present with them. 
I take a lot of notes for a couple reasons. I take lots of notes because, number one, I forget <laughs> what we talked about, especially meeting with multiple different people. So I always ask when we start our one-on-one series, like, is it okay if I take notes? Uh, it's just for my own, like, remembrance. <laughs> I feel like that was a Harry Potter's reference, a uh, Harry Potter reference without trying. <laughs> um And it's also important to me so that I can go back. So if I'm having a weekly one-on-one with somebody, I want to be able to go back to the previous meeting and ask anything that like about anything they said they were working on or doing or needed help with. So for example, if one of my team members is like, okay, I'm going to try to meet with XYZ person next week. And so then the following week when we meet, I'll say, oh, how did that meeting go? Were you able to connect with that person? And they can tell me, oh, it went really well. Or they can say, oh, I'm having a really hard time getting a hold of them. Can you help me? So it's it's it shows that I care, that I'm paying attention, and I can help move the needle forward instead of things just dropping off. Sometimes if people don't get to the things they say they will get to in meetings, they get ashamed, and then they don't mention them again unless you bring them up. And it's like, no, no judgment. Like, I'm here to help you. Um, one of my tips that I do want to give about making your meeting, meetings, your one-on-one meetings better is asking if it's important. So here's the thing. People tell me all the time, like, okay, so if I have a person who isn't getting their work done, but I like constantly ask them about it in their one-on-one, like, isn't that micromanaging or doesn't that feel like icky? And I'll say this. I used to feel like that. I used to feel like, oh, I can't bring this up again. I swear. I've brought it up like eight times. Like, this is really uncomfortable. But then I flipped my mindset and I read um, more Brene Brown stuff. If you haven't read Brene Brown, she's amazing. And she has this quote from one of her books. Like, I think it's from Dare to Lead. And she says, clear is kind. And so... Essentially, she says that if you don't bring something up or if you don't talk about it, but you let all of that like resentment and everything build up in you, like that is way less kind than just being very honest with yourself and with someone else. And so here's the thing. If say you were in a meeting with your direct report and you sit through like, I don't know, three meetings where you really want to ask about a project because you know it's not moving forward and it's affecting you because you need this work to move forward, but you don't ask about it. And then the fourth meeting, you're like, hey, so it's been like a month. Like when is, you know, when is this work going to get done? And all of a sudden they're like, wait, what? And you're like, you know, this is a project that I assigned to you, that we talked about, that we agreed upon. Like, it's still pending, right? And they're going to be like, sometimes, like, wait, I didn't know. Or I haven't been working on that because you haven't asked me about it. So I thought it wasn't a priority. So now you've been, like, upset with this person in your mind. And that's not fair to them because they're thinking, like, you're good because you haven't even asked about it. When we ask about something, it shows that it's important to us. Otherwise, we wouldn't care. You know, there's a lot of things I don't ask about as a manager because I know my team's taking care of them. And frankly, that's their scope of work. And uh, I don't need to monitor it. And and it's just going to get done. But if it's really important to me, like even if it's something small, like I'm going to ask. The same thing goes for like, maybe they're just ashamed to bring it up. And they know they haven't done it. And so they're going to be like, oh, I feel really terrible. Like, I didn't know what to do. And it was just easier not to bring it up than to ask for help. Well, shoot. Then a month ago, it would have been really helpful if you had asked. Because then you could have helped them through that uh, difficulty. So always, always ask if it's important to you and encourage folks, tell them they're doing fantastic, think that it's good, thank them. And again, like model what you expect, like come prepared to the meeting, take notes, be encouraging, ask about what's important, encourage them to ask you about things like, 
you know, any rumors they've heard or any questions they have or any system-wide emails that need clarification. So the last piece I want to talk about, about enhancing your one-on-ones is the project template. So this is actually not something that's in my free resource library, but is included in my leader standard workbook. So you might know, I actually have a planner just for leaders. Um, because my whole goal is to help leaders beat burnout and lead efficient, you know, productive and vibrant careers. And so I found I was needing some sort of planner that was going to help me that had the tools I needed in it every single day. And so I created what's called the Leader Standard Workbook. Of course, it has my Leader Standard Work template in it. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm obsessed with my Leader Standard Work. But it also has the one-on-one meeting template in here so that you can take notes and uh, write in your planner. But it also has a project list and the little icon. It's a digital planner. Um, you can download it in PDF form. You can download it in GoodNotes, the GoodNotes app. Um, I can use it in OneNote, um, pretty much any PDF writer. I have an active projects list section. And so the projects list is essentially your goal category. So you talk, you know, our at our workplaces, we often have our goals categorized by what kind of strategy. So maybe this is for people engagement. I have a column for green or red. So is the project behind or is it on, on point? The name of the project, obviously, any status updates. So I can just write in like uh, bullet points. And then there's a column for actions needed for one up leader. So to enhance my one-on-ones, I was finding I needed more structure around what I wanted to hear from up here about from my direct reports. And I felt like I wanted an easy way to give status updates to my leader. And so we all started using an active project list where, and we call it our dashboard, essentially, where we update each week when we meet with our leaders or when they meet with me, for example, we update this project list and then we just sort of go down the line and anything new, they just write in green. That's sort of our company policy that, you know, when you update procedures, it, it becomes a different color. And so we either highlight it or update it in green. And then any actions needed from the one up leader, they'll put in that column. So really I can just like skim through their project list, know exactly what they're working on. And then if they need something from me, it's totally called out, which is great. And instead of going through each project, because we all have a ton, right? I'll just go right to the ones that need action from me. So actions from me might need like, mean like connecting somebody with a person or, you know, help. I'm kind of feeling stuck. Where should I take this? Um, sometimes like one of my most recent ones with my boss was like, you know, like, is this something that's still a priority for the organization or do you think I should table it until 2022? And so it's questions like that, that make your one-on-ones even better because you have a little bit more structure around it. People know to be checking their active project list, uh, at least at the cadence in which they meet with you. <laughs> I know for me, it's a really, really good reminder to check in with my my dashboard before I meet with my boss. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I have that hanging project. Oh yeah, I need to do that. And so it's sort of a running like to-do list, but mostly it's just high level uh, overview of the different projects I'm working on. And the other good thing is if I look at the list and I don't see something on there that I thought the person was working on, then clear as kind, I can just ask about it easy peasy, no big deal. And they might be like, oh, I forgot to put that on there. Or they might say, oh, I wasn't thinking of that as a project. Okay. Like, yeah, like I need to put more attention and focus on it. So it's a great, great gut check. And then it's also something that you can use as a tool to share with your boss. Like if you want to tell them what your team's doing, like look and see, see what active projects my team has. Um, I've definitely shared this template with other leaders in the organization who asked me, you know, how do you get somebody to take accountability for their work? I say, well, they have to bring me their project list. I ask for their project list. 
clear as kind. And, you know, they're like, oh, okay. I'm like, you know, I can't possibly, you know, I know what projects people are working on, but I can't possibly remember to ask about every single one. They need to own their own work. And so when they update their dashboard, they're showing me that they're being a proactive leader, that they care about their work, and that if they need actions or, you know, help from me, that they're they're going to ask for it. And they know that in the one-on-one, I'm creating the space for that. So I hope those tips really, really helped you guys. Um, there's a lot that I feel like goes into one-on-ones, but just overall, I structure mine 30 minutes to an hour a week. I give the person the first third of the meeting, two thirds of the meeting, 10 to 20 minutes if it's a 30 minute meeting. And I start with what's on your mind. I let them share what barriers they have, anything they feel they need to escalate, anything they have questions on, they need advice about. And then for the last part, I share any updates I have with them and ask, you know, clear as kind, ask about anything that's important that they didn't already bring up. And then if time, we talk about personal development or goals, but I always schedule about, you know, a quarterly um, to to touch on those goals, you know, either outside of the one-on-one or during the one-on-one meeting time. Um, I take notes and I use my one-on-one template, which again, you can find in my free resource library, which I'll link in the show notes or is on my website at glowgetterslife.com. And it has the instructions for the structure, the cadence, and the meeting content in there. And then to enhance and do even better one-on-ones, I use the project list. So that's not in my free resource library at this point. It is in my leader standard workbook, which is my planner for leaders. If you're interested in that, you can also find it at my website, glowgetterslife.com. It's in the Leave Happy Method shop or store, which is linked at the top of the bio there. And if you click through, you'll see that. Um, Let me know if you want the project list uh, outside of the workbook. I I will think about making that available um, outside on my website. So let me know. I'd like to hear from you. Is that something that you want me to provide? Um, But yeah, I'll, I'll also link that in the show notes for you. So I'm looking forward to hearing, like, how did this help your one on ones? How did it help you feel more prepared? How did it help your um, direct reports feel more prepared and communicate intentionally with you to build relationships, but also move your work forward? All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to episode 90. And like I said, I'm so pumped. I can't believe that um, on October 20th, we're going to have our 100th episode. So definitely like stay tuned for that and make sure you don't forget um, to follow me on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Art so that we, uh, you can participate in the giveaway that I'm going to do for that. Um, and remember one week till the leader toolkit course opens and launches. And so if you're like on the fence, make sure you get on the wait list from the link in the show notes or at my website, glowgetterslife.com. All right. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week and take care everybody. Bye. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I wanted to let you know about something new that I'm doing. If you could please leave me a rating and review on iTunes or right in your Apple Podcasts app, I would so appreciate it. Each week, I'm going to be doing a drawing and sending an email to a winner just to say thank you with some treats, tips, and a little bit of extras because I really want to get this podcast out to more people and I want to hear how it's helping you getting feedback about what you love to hear about and what you love about the podcast so I can keep doing that. Also, if you'd like to connect with me on a deeper level, check out my website at glowgetterslife.com. You'll find links to my about me page so you can learn about me and my journey in leadership. You'll find links to my blog, my podcast for more episodes and to my YouTube channel. And you can also find links to the templates and leadership planners I've created, as well as my free resource library. All right. Thanks so much. And until next time, be a light.